area, what's the main message of Nasrallah and what's behind it? Well, I think, Jacob, that Nasrallah is trying to signal to Israel that there's a new balance of deterrence between the sides. This is not the situation that was uh, back in 2006 uh, in the Second Lebanon War. He's saying that if, if this were Israel of a few years ago, it would have very quickly destroyed the tents with a couple of tank shells or a drone strike. But the situation has changed. He, and for proof of that, he's saying, look at what happened with the maritime border. No one cared about it for years. Israel is about to extract on its own unilaterally. And only once Hezbollah threatened to attack the Karish rig, the offshore drilling rig, with its drones, then the world woke up. The Lebanese government uh, got more involved and got a bigger part of the deal. The U.S. got involved. They said Amos Hochstein was sent to Israel. This is also the case now, according to reports. And so he's saying the tense is the same thing. It put a spotlight on the contentious land border with Israel. And basically what's happening and what we're seeing with his steps on the ground is that Nasrallah is portraying pretty much full-on brinksmanship. He's, I mean, Le Lebanese media that is close to Hezbollah is saying Hezbollah is not seeking war, Nasrallah is not does not want uh, all open, full-on conflict with Israel, but he is trying to raise the threshold of tension. Why? Because he can, because Hezbollah sees that what's going on in Israel, for them, in their eyes, it, it, <clears throat> it uh, shows weakness in Israel, and that way they can raise this threshold of operation, because it, domestically it serves him as well, saying that the little Hezbollah has taken on big Israel. So for him, he's getting a lot of achievements here, at least that's how he's trying to portray it. Right. What's happening in Israel, Israel meaning the conflicts uh, within Israeli society and demonstrations? Yeah, and so the judiciary right. reform and the, and the right. massive widespread protests. Yeah. And it, they, he doesn't want war. Nobody wants war, but they happen somehow, right? They happen mainly because of, of, of miscalculations, but also because of chains of events that you only notice that is, that you're in one in a chain of events that leads you right. to a war only once it's broken. Mm. I do think it's interesting to, to point out that the incident on the border with the a non-lethal explosive that blew up that was in Zarit. That's the same spot that Hezbollah forces entered the border, killed three soldiers, kidnapped two others, and that's what started the Second Lebanon War. So, so th th there, Hezbollah is known for their symbolic provocations. 17 years ago. Thank you very much, Aurelio Saran. With us now is Brigadier General Ilan Ovi, formerly with IDF Northern Command. Thank you very much for joining us. Um, Good evening. Are we getting closer to a conflict there? Yes, I think that we are getting closer to a conflict. I cannot say that the conflict, the meaning of the conflict is a full war, but I think that uh, Nasrallah is uh, thinking to uh, go forward. Metaphorically, when if you take Nasrallah metaphorically and uh, Let's imagine that he's standing on the lookout of Maruna Ras, the ice, the ice point in Lebanon, and he's looking back to Lebanon. He understands that he needs to create a situation that the Lebanese will be with him. And that's not the situation right now in Lebanon, because Lebanon is a collapsed country, and most of the Lebanese are not seeking for fighting. So for, from his point of view, Richen will enable him to uh, create a more comfortable uh, situation uh, inside Lebanon. And when he's looking inside Israel, then he uh, see a society that uh, argues deeply uh, regarding the reform, and he thinks that Israel is becoming uh, weaker. From the other side, if we take uh, Prime Minister uh, Netanyahu, and he will stand metaphorically on Mount Adir, where is the memorial site of the Second Lebanon War. And if we look to Lebanon, he will imagine and understand that Lebanon is a country full of mud. And when he looks back to Israel, he sees that he is in great conflict, and cannot get great conflict. So the interests are not the same. Hezbollah seeks to a friction. Israel is uh, looking for uh, trying to, uh, let's say, solve some of the internal problem, problems, and uh, there is the Palestinian issue in the territories. So that's the situation right now. And as your reporter said, 
and someone can take uh, a step forward and we can be in a world without any, you know, intention. Right. Well, you know, there are some in Israel that say that uh, actually a military uh, uh, development in the north would solve some of the problems inside, but that's a different story. Uh, but there is growing criticism inside Israel for not responding to those provocations along the border. Um, was Israel uh, trying to contain it, uh, maybe, uh, uh, you know, in, in, in paying the price of not deterring Hezbollah enough? When we are talking about Israel, we have to divide it to two parts, the military part and the political part. I think, I assume, I didn't talk with uh, commanders in the IDF, but I think that uh, they are frustrated from the situation that uh, Hezbollah is uh, uh, taking steps and probably uh, they are being given an order not to go forward, not to react, okay? From the political side, it's quite obvious that someone doesn't want to create a situation that we will be in, in a clash with Hezbollah, not for now, not in this period. All right, Ilan Levy, we'll leave it at that. Thank you very much.